Perhaps for wrestling fans, your perspective is that wrestlers are there to entertain you. Seems logical, right? That the way they entertain you is by doing the most moves, the most bumps, the most high spots. And, well, I guess at least with modern wrestling fans, right? Because they kind of missed the fucking plot when it comes to professional wrestling. But as much as you might be a fan of wrestling and love wrestling deep down in your soul, and I understand why, I've been watching all these years too, I totally get it. You might think to yourself, well, that's what it's about. It's about wrestling. That's what the business is all about. And these guys should just love it. And bullshit to all that. Wrestling, first and foremost, is a business. A business where the only name of the game, if you are in the business, is to make as much money as you possibly can for as long as you can while you can. And over the years, somewhere along the way, wrestling really started to miss the fucking plot here. It's not about popping the internet. It's not about fucking getting five-star ratings from Meltzer. It's about making money, especially in a career field such as professional wrestling that can be so hard on the talent and their physical health, their mental health, their their psychological health, you go on and on and on. Knowing that the careers don't last that long, you typically don't see a lot of people wrestling into their mid or late 60s or 70s. By and large, you don't. You got to get in where you fit in and get as much chop as you can when the hell you can. That is the name of the game. If you think it is about anything else other than that, first and foremost, making money, you are wrong. You can have a different opinion, but please know it is wrong. Making as much money as you possibly can is the name of the game. And if these recent reports are true, and certainly plenty of reason to believe there is, then the Bucks, Kenny Omega, Hangman Page, the Elite in general, are even stupider than I thought they were. You don't want to work with CM Punk because of your feelings. Like, it's one of those things that comes across sometimes, like angry wrestling fan yelling at the clouds, right? Like, back in my day, they weren't fucking whiny bitches like this. And to be very clear, they absolutely fucking were. For those old school wrestlers that sit there and pretend like 30, 40 years ago they didn't have all this drama and backstabbing and behind the scenes bullshit, they're full of shit and they fucking know it and they should be called to task when they try to pretend like they did it. And in some ways they were even more petty, they were even more jealous, they were even more cutthroat back then compared to now. Or it's a little bit more of a kumbaya society, but that's part of the problem, right? Everybody just wants to work with their friends and have fun and have great matches and all this other bullshit. If the elite are so caught up in their own bullshit and their own feelings that they can't look past that to sit there and see the opportunity for them to arguably work the most interesting angle they've ever had in the United States, in their entire professional wrestling careers, there's a fucking problem here. They're fucking morons. If they can't put those feelings aside as both wrestlers, but especially as executive vice presidents of the goddamn company that they work for, if they can't put that shit to the side for the sake of business, to be able to do potentially record business for AEW, they are fucking clowns. Well, nobody should have to work in a hostile work environment. Look, I talked about it a few months back when all this shit went down. They all look fucking stupid in this whole deal. The Bucks, Omega, Paige, Punk, Tony Khan, they all looked idiotic. 
Nobody looks good here. If you're taking anybody's side here, what the fuck's wrong with you? Because they all look stupid. They all went into business for themselves at some point in time. And then Tony Khan, the idiot running the show, didn't put his fucking foot down. But I kind of expect that from Tony Khan. Because he acts like the son of a billionaire that benefited from nepotism, that inherited a bunch of money and opportunity because of who his dad is and how much money his dad had. This is the type of behavior you would expect from somebody like in that, that grew up in that situation. But these guys that have been in the wrestling business for 10, 15, 20 plus years, they're supposed to fucking know better. And if FTR and CM Punk can't put aside their feelings towards the elite to work with them to do business, then they're fucking idiots too. And they should know better, especially CM Punk. He's been around the block a long time. He knows what it's like to have to work with and work for people you can't fucking stand. And as far as FTR goes, them getting into an angle here with the elite at this time would be the most interesting thing they've ever damn done. Be the opportunity for them to make the most money they ever have made. I'm sure of it. Like, how stupid do you have to be? How much of a pussy do you have to be? How much of an idiot do you have to be, a crybaby, to sit there and not be willing to do business because somebody hurt my feelings? I mean, that's basically what we've gotten down to here. Like, you have plenty of AEW fans that are going to sit there and no matter what, are going to pound the table for the elite because they can't fucking help themselves. They can't see past their own bias through the bullshit. But this is bullshit. You've got All In coming up in a few months in London. And how stupid it would look for the elite to work, pass up the opportunity to work with CM Punk and allow Chris Jericho to politic his way into that fucking spot. And Jericho and Punk have some heat. At least you can say for Jericho, as much as he has his flaws too, he's at least smart enough to see, hey, here's an opportunity for this young lion to stay somewhat relevant. Let me latch onto this shit. Let me take advantage of it and make some damn money with it. You know, like you're supposed to do with fucking professional wrestling. Stop being over -sen overly sensitive babies and pussies. And put that shit in the back burner. Oh, who wants to work in a hostile work environment? Lots of people fucking do and they have to deal with it. And you know what you fucking do sometimes? Why well, don't like working? You're never going to get to work with a bunch of people that you like. You pretend like you like some of the people you work with. But the reality is you do actually like very, very few of them. You may have been able to con yourself. <laughs> no Tony Khan pun intended here. You may have been able to con yourself into believing that you like a lot of the people that you work with, but you know deep down, you fucking don't. You wouldn't trust them to feed your goddamn goldfish, let alone rely on them for a big project or a key deliverable, because you don't believe they could come through, let alone have to show up to the goddamn potluck and eat the food from their damn house. But you work with them. And as easy as it is to say, the elite look really stupid here, because they do. And if Punk and FTR don't want to work with the elite, that they would look stupid here too, because they would. You're getting to the point where we're talking about, and I'm going to talk about this in another video, having to create a two-hour Saturday show, so you have a fucking roster split, and it's Team Elite on one show, and Team Punk on another show? Who's running shit here, Tony Khan? Put your goddamn foot down. Tell them to get over them fucking selves. And as far as the elite go, you don't fucking need them. Believe me, you don't. You could draw 850,000 viewers a week just fine with them, just fine without them. Nobody, and I repeat, nobody is bigger than the goddamn brand. And the more that you let these guys get away with this bullshit, the more they're going to think that they actually are and they're going to drive your brand into the fucking ground. As much as everybody wants to talk about being better than Vince McMahon or being like Vince McMahon, it's situations like this where other promoters show just how far removed they are from Vince McMahon even on Vince's worst day. 
Vince, at the end of the day, was the head motherfucker in charge, and WWE still technically is. And nobody ever disputed that. He could find a way to work with people that he couldn't fucking stand. He would make, find a way to make people work together that couldn't fucking stand each other. Because that's what you do in the name of business and making goddamn money. Well, Hogan, I can't believe I'm quoting Hogan here. But he said, you either have friends or you can have money in this business. I already have some friends. I really like the money. Exactly. Now you're going to say, well, Hogan would say that doesn't work for me, brother. No. He would go make sure he got himself a raise and found a way to get himself put over with the one, two, three. But God damn it, the holster would do some damn business more likely than not. The elite need to pull their head out, heads out of their asses and do what's best for business and actually do fucking business. And if they don't like that, they can fucking leave AEW, take their bullshit with them and let somebody else deal with that crap. AEW doesn't need this. Tony Khan doesn't need it. It's about how high time Tony Khan reminds everyone that it's his show, it's his company, he's the fucking boss, and if they don't like it, they can eat fucking dicks and hit the bricks. He got four months to build up to all in. Find a way to make it fucking happen.